Now, the reason why the literature focuses so much on the frequency of price changes is because in the new Keynesian model, uh, you know, which is the main model used uh, for uh, monetary economics and business cycle macro, uh, the frequency of price changes is a critical uh, parameter. That's because you know it's, it's the key parameter that's going to govern. Uh, Yes, so, well, how frequently prices change and therefore is going to uh, govern the slope of the Phillips curve and then you will have a lot of influence on the entire behavior of the model. That's because um, you know, the new Keynesian model, the source of monetary non-neutrality is uh, the assumption of uh, infrequent price changes, you know, that's taken from a Calvo and in, under Calvo pricing, um, there is a single parameter that determines um, the frequency at which uh, firms are allowed to change their prices. You know, it's the frequency at which a Calvo ferry is going to visit the firms. Um, and so that frequency at which a firms are allowed to change their prices, that's going to determine you know, most of the properties of the model. And so it's, it was critical to be able to calibrate um, that parameter properly, uh, for, uh, you know, using micro evidence. And so that's why that literature has really focused on measuring the frequency of price changes, because that frequency, you can then plug it into the model. Um, it corresponds to um, the parameter uh, of the Calvo pricing, and then it's going to have a whole lot of influence. Um, but in a sense, all this uh, evidence that I've showed you for the distribution, uh, that we have here of the frequency of price changes and then the median and the mean of this and the implied duration, they really don't tell us anything about price rigidity. In fact, they don't even establish that there is any price rigidity um, because we don't know what the underlying shocks are. And so, you know, it's it's possible that um, the diff, you know different products, different services face different shocks to the source of to their cost of production. And maybe these shocks are distributed exactly like what we see here. You know, you have goods for which shocks occur, you know, once a month with certainty. You have goods for which uh, shocks to the cost of production almost never occur. And as a result, you could have uh, a distribution of a frequency of price changes that look like this. We really don't learn, and, you know, we, you know, I mean, you can use that to calibrate your Calvo parameters, but really if we care about uh, price flexibility, we haven't learned anything just because we don't know what the underlying shocks are. Um, so what you really want is you want to be able to find a goods or services for which you have an exogenous shock, and then you want to be able to observe how firms adjust their prices in response to that shock. That would establish price rigidity. If you see that the response to the shock is less than one for one, then you would know that you would have price rigidity. If you see that the response to the shock is complete, is one for one, then you would know that you'll have price flexibility. So what I'm saying is that what you really want to be able to establish price flexibility or price rigidity um, is evidence on the path through of cost into prices. But it turns out that we do have evidence like this, and it's something that uh, micro people don't pay too much attention to, um, but I think that that's a mistake. I think that's really the convincing evidence of um, of price rigidity would actually come from pass-through. So uh, let me review briefly what we know about pass-through. So there's much less evidence on pass-through than on the frequency of price changes because, you know, the literature was focusing on that, as I was saying, because it's a key parameter in the, you know, in the Calvo model and in macro models with Calvo pricing. Um, but I think it's, it's much more informative to look at pass-through. So, um, let's look at what we have, uh, what we know about pass-through, and the things that we know, as you will see, that pass-through are uh, quite incomplete, actually. So prices are rigid for that reason. So this evidence here that I'm going to review comes from a paper that I wrote with um, Eric Eister and Christoph Madaras. in which we um, propose a model of price rigidity uh, based on uh, fairness concern. So it's a model in which uh, customers don't like uh, price changes that they see as unfair, and firms are aware of that, and they are going to therefore adjust their prices 
in a limited fashion to uh, avoid antagonizing customers. So there's a lot of evidence that this mechanism is at play. So in this paper, we review, because our model produces incomplete pass-through, we review evidence of incomplete pass-through. And so I'm going to show you that evidence here. Uh, so what we show is that uh, the pass-through of uh, marginal cost changes into prices is uh, incomplete. So that means it's strictly less than 100%. That means that when your marginal cost changes by 10%, your price is going to change by less than 10%. So if marginal cost increases by 10%, your price is going to increase by less than 10%. If your marginal cost drops by 10%, your price is going to decrease by less than 10%. Um, so the pass-through is incomplete. That's the key finding from the literature, and that's the key evidence. Uh, that's the key evidence of um, price rigidity. Um, so this is the evidence that we survey there. Uh, so the key thing is that prices do not fully respond to marginal cost shocks, and we, you know, we've collected all the evidence that was available at the time that we wrote the paper, and it comes from different countries and different type of setups. Um, so the first one um, is looking at Sweden, and it's looking at how product prices change when labor cost for the producers change. And uh, so this is about product prices and uh, labor cost. And uh, so that paper is about to find idiosyncratic uh, change in marginal costs that are due to idiosyncratic change in labor cost. And then they look, when these labor costs change, which leads to a change in marginal cost, they are going to look at how prices change. And what they find is that the pass-through is about 0 0.3, um, so 30%. Um, so, of course, much less than 100%. Another nice piece of evidence comes from India. So this is looking at uh, trade liberalization in India in the 90s. So there was a big trade liberalization. Um, thanks to that, so you, the tariffs for imports dropped a lot. So all the goods that were produced using imported goods became much cheaper to produce because you had much less tariffs. Um, and so you had a big drop in marginal cost because tariffs were lower for these goods that use uh, imported goods. And, but then what, we, what um, the local and co-authors found is that Prices did fall, so marginal costs fell for these goods that use imported goods. Prices fell, but they didn't fall one for one with a drop in marginal cost. So the pass-through, again, was much less than 100%. And what they find, actually, is a pass-through quite similar to the Swedish evidence. They find pass-through between 0.3 and 0.4, so 30% to 40%. Third piece of evidence comes from Mexico. Um, this is manufacturing. This is a paper by Caselli, Chatterjee, and Woodland. Um, again, they find similar pass-through. So here they look at uh, change in marginal cost in manufacturing and how this affects, uh, how this affects prices. And they find that um, pass-through change uh, between 20 percent, the pass-through is between 20 percent and 40 percent uh, when cost, uh, when cost change, uh, the response of prices is only, you know, 20 percent to 40 percent of that underlying cost change. And then the last piece of evidence comes from the US. Um, and so this is looking at uh, what happens to prices when you have big changes in energy prices. So, you know, if the energy price change, the so marginal cost is going to change and therefore prices should change. But the question is how much? And what these guys find is that um, the pass-through of marginal cost changes that are caused by this fluctuation in energy prices is you know, between uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. And so then if you aggregate everything, you know, you get an average pass-through of uh, around 0 0.4. Um, so what that means is that uh, overall, you know, the pass-through of uh, marginal cost changes into um, prices is about 40%, which is much less than 100%. Um, 
And so what we learned from that is that um, prices are, are rigid in that sense. So they are not completely fixed because completely fixed would be a pass of zero, um, but they are also not flexible because the pass is less than 100%. Prices are somewhat rigid, but not fixed, of course. And what's actually quite interesting in that literature also on pass-through is that they find that firms uh, respond very quickly to changes in marginal cost. So it's not true that when you have an short to underlying cost, firms are going to have to wait a long time before changing their price, you know, which is something that is assumed by Calvo pricing. You don't see that. You see an immediate response of firms, but a response that's uh, somewhat muted compared to the change in the marginal cost. Um, and so if you want to have a, you know, a good uh, theory of price rigidity, you should replicate this type of finding. And the theory that we propose in that paper on uh, fair pricing actually delivers this type of properties. Um, 